emails do that e emails don't send binary binaries they send base 64 mm. just that you know okay that's why if you want to send you know that the limit is 20 megabytes <laughs> and you do 18 megabytes and sometimes it cannot send it yeah that's because it's base 64 because it does it in base, base 64 and then it's actually larger than 20 ah, megabytes obviously. okay uh-huh understood <laughs> that's the little nitpicks yeah. man when you know these protocols you know how to do it <laughs> yeah and hello everyone and welcome to hey, a hey. new video man with me we already we <laughs> cannot stop laughing already we haven't even started the video no. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fun today it's it's <laughs> It's it's like the feeling like when you're heading up at the roller coaster and you know it's gonna yeah. be a good ride. You, know? <laughs> and you, you just cannot start laughing and nothing's happening yet. Yeah, you know? the anticipation. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. And do what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Today, my fellow mushroom. <laughs> and hey, <laughs> nice. No, actually, it's um, I learned about um, the combination of green tea and mushroom, which advances the effects yeah. even more so today i went out for oh, the no, full man. package got my silvery needle and some chips of the yeah. mushroom inside yeah oh wow that's a good combination yeah. man yeah 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 for those who don't know it it was the it's a it's a kind of reishi yeah um reishi mushroom yeah yeah hold it in the camera so good man yeah, it's a good combination. Not too much of the mushroom. Yeah, yeah. Or, just I mean, slices. Really... Just small slices with the metal saw. <laughs> totally appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so good, man. <laughs> I, you know, the thing is, I always think about chopping up my mushrooms. And then I always get to the point where I'm like, I just really enjoy having to slice the shit out of my mushroom to get a tea, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It uh, makes you appreciate it a little bit more, the, the work you put in. And yeah, so I know that the last time you were here, when I was sweating all about uh, cutting this <laughs> yeah, mushroom good. because the the saw was um, yeah bold, yeah a metal yeah. saw was yeah. right, yeah yeah that's the problem. It was uh, really hard. I I also got a I also got now my wood mm -hmm. saw for it because I also f for a time I just used a metal yeah. saw because I didn't want to waste yeah. too much. But now like I got a really bad ass <laughs> metal saw. And it just chips the sh <laughs> really through it. Yeah. But the powder is really good because I can now just collect it and use it also for something, right. you know. So I have both yeah. now. I really decided to, okay, uh, maybe it's about time <laughs> to, to get a, get a, a proper wood saw for that. Yeah. yeah, otherwise it's it's, yeah. it's really dense, it's right? Tough, yeah. And it's not even like wood. You don't get nicely through like wood or something. It's really something more sturdy. And you would like you more like bluish. Yeah. A bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'd, I, you wouldn't think that a mushroom is like that, but it's really like like wood. But yeah, it's rock solid, man. <laughs> like if your wife tosses that at your yeah. head, man, that's, yeah. that's a goner. Yeah, you don't have to think any more about that. Yeah, <laughs> and you don't need tea after that. <laughs> is that how the how the door in the kitchen got damaged? <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I don't know. Did, did, did Jula tell tell you? I don't know really. So it, it must be happening. No, it, it must have happened uh, in the earlier days. So okay, 10 okay. years, 12 years, 15 years back, either my brother okay. or I did uh, did that to the door. So, so it wasn't the pan? No, 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 no. I think it was the foot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it looks pretty <laughs> hard, right? It looks really hard, man. Uh, like it was a huge hole, not hole, yeah, but, but it was it's quite some some, some bigger dent. And yeah, this door, yeah, never, yeah. never change that, man. Like it gives the kitchen a lot <laughs> yeah. of character and, and makes sure that anyone who comes in knows <laughs> yeah. that this household is not just is also serious, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. No, no, it was oh, even man. better. Uh, as a as a kid, um, I was a complete idiot. Um, I did with with bow uh, archery, right? I did that inside the house, and I opened yeah, the nice doors. <laughs> Somehow, I don't know, my brother or so uh, closed the door, and just in that moment, I shot, and um, yeah, a little hole was in the door. But I think that door got replaced, so it's not at least not your yeah, brother. Yeah, but this was kind of close. 
Um, yeah. yeah, stupid so, things. So, dude, we need to continue, yeah. man. We need to make a video for fun from time yeah. to time. Like, let's keep that up. We just record for fun and then but for, tell all people about the insanity <laughs> of our lives. Yeah. For the fun and jiggles. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes we have so many stories. Mm. It's just... I feel like sometimes really living in a movie, but it's it's too funny. Nah, uh, today I'm drinking jasmine, man. I bought mm -hmm. I bought jasmine. Um, since uh, for the, the listeners that don't know what I do, uh, I, I I leave Germany for winter. I'm done with it. Yeah, it's cold and that stuff. I go to Portugal. I envy you. And I actually bought one kilogram of tea <laughs> for traveling. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, I, no, I think I bought even more, but but uh, the bill was a hundred euros. It was quite okay. quite expensive, <laughs> but I, I could not bear going anywhere not knowing if I get good yeah, tea there. Right, but I think I really overdid it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I think I bought two hundred fifty grams of of jasmine yeah, alone. Yeah. You know, and then they had for some teas they didn't have big enough bags so they needed to use <laughs> multiple yeah but but the, the upside of it is you have enough tea for the whole uh time you are there yeah and all the people who come can yeah. drink till they die yeah it's also important yeah right yeah, yeah. tea is something to be shared so so lot today <laughs> after 15 minutes introduction but yeah it's yeah. good life is about life if it rolls, it rolls. You don't want to stop it. Right. Um, today, man, we take a look at APIs. Yep. Uh, it took me 15 years to write the documentation. I was like, ah, should I just write a book? Because <laughs> it's so freaking much, man. <laughs> like, in just holding, hosting a freaking website or so, you can do it really easily with this cloud mm -hmm. stuff where you don't have to give a care about yeah. anything. But if you really want to know how stuff works... Yeah. And and do it from the bottom up. Uh, yeah, it's a long story, yeah. man. It's really long it's more story. Small for deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> Took a deep dive of my jasmine, yeah. man. <laughs> Dying life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a new one. So yeah, we go into the yeah. API. Uh, this is almost the last lesson, and uh, for all out. All they're out of you. Uh, all you out there. All, all, yeah, <laughs> thank you, man. Like the T is, uh, I guess, a bit stuck in my head yeah. too. Um, the last task, though, will be an API. So yeah. be yeah. aware that uh, you will have to go <clears> through this. <throat> but you will. Um, the last task, I won't do it to to. There are multiple levels. I thought doing an API, you could really get into deep shit if you mm -hmm. want to. But I thought, um, nah, like the the one I give you is a pretty fair and easy example okay. how to do an API. Like all the all the really dirty shit you usually have to take care of. Yeah, you won't. Okay. Um, it's a it's a bit. I, I'm a bit sad about it because I usually like to throw people into dirt. Um, maybe we do a, a, a second task on top of it. I, I'm not entirely sure, but the thing is just. Um, you would need to have a server or something and really host a website and that stuff mm -hmm. to really get a feeling for... Because the problem is it's, we have... We, this is a Python code, yeah. uh, the, a Python professional course, but hosting something is entirely DevOps. It's, it's around Python. Mm -hmm. And this is even more severe than we already did so far. And I'm not so sure, like... How far to go? That would be maybe... Mm -hmm. a, yeah, yeah. How, how much out of Python we should go for this course. Yeah. Uh, we'll still see yeah. how about that. But very important is I wrote all the important stuff in this thing. So even if you don't use it, you have at least heard of on how it's usually done, mm -hmm. you know, um, partially. I mean, there's so many ways. It's another thing, like everyone does everything differently in terms of hosting. Mm -hmm. Like it's also like if, you ha if, if I get a Linux machine and someone tells me host something on top of it, I'm like easy peasy. Mm -hmm. But then in companies, there's always oh, our network is differently, like, you know, different network zones in the company yeah. and how to get traffic out and in. Yeah. And it's so complicated. And usually it's always specific in, in bigger companies, especially where I'm dealing yeah. with. So you never have the same circumstances, no matter where you are and what you mm -hmm. do. So that's also part of DevOps is a bit like if you search stability and uniformity, 
stuff like of course there's kubernetes and that stuff but mm -hmm. and, and the cloud but then there's always this part where the client comes in or whatever mm -hmm. where you have to you're like yeah i cannot do it just do you know simple like where they will be like no this doesn't work for us yeah. you know and you're like ah shit yeah yeah <sighs> This is going to be a long story. You already know it when they start with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> like some sort of the, yeah, so... um, the power. You know this meme with the power connectors where you have the EU into. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's something like that, right? We need to show it yeah. maybe in a video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one. Okay. With the API, um, I will walk you quickly through. But um, abstract principles, this is so so funny because if you apply for for a job and they ask you about apis they, they always ask about what kind of apis you know always like i i, I got interviewed mm -hmm, a few mm -hmm. times um and they always come back to these questions it's so ridiculous what they always want to hear is rest yeah. which is the first principle where which a lot of people use actually not that many of you look at the entirety of it but a lot uh, which this is really a principle like there's no implementation behind it they just kind of teach you do this st stick to this principles and then you get mm -hmm. this you know like um it's really about uh stick to statelessness for example then you get horizontal scalability yeah. for yeah. example yeah. yeah like you 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 should really know that you can violate these but then you're screwed up where here somewhere you know in these um uh, properties mostly it's about scalability to be honest mm -hmm. um and rest is really just the guideline for giving you that you know um there's no like some people think it's connected to some formats like json mm -hmm. or whatsoever it's, it's nothing of that it's really just teaching your principle um the second one you should really know manu yes is soap um soap is like if you ever want to work for a bank that's basically how they communicate mm -hmm. and that is actually really really uh, precise that's not a principle that's really how you do it they communicate with the format is for example xml yeah. and that stuff so they always want to hear soap but no one uses it in at least in the domain <laughs> i was always <laughs> but they're always like which do you know and then you're like rest soap can we please continue yeah, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this buzzword these buzz yeah, yeah, the, buzzword catch I'm, I'm always not good at yeah, when they start with these buzzword parties, I'm really not, I don't yeah. know. It's just making me sad because in the end, then you have a job and they they never talk about rest at the job and they never talk about soap mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. you know. So it has nothing to do funny. with the job, just yeah. the interview thing. Yeah. Um, if you just stick to a uh, classical Python API, which means you use HTTP for communication, mm -hmm. okay? That's one of the protocols compared with most of the time json to be honest http and json um that's your biggest friends mm -hmm. um then you most of these things here actually are taken care of you know um about well, transparency portability more or less portability mm -hmm. um but most of these these simplicity um and so forth and that you can stuff can be extended and changed like a lot about how an api is written in, in in python already you already get a lot of these properties here so it's not like you need to make sure that ev you get all of this the only thing you really can screw up if you um don't are aware of it is statelessness never store anything in the a api mm -hmm. which means a request comes in and if whatever you want to save man put it into a cache like redis mm -hmm. Or put it into a database like uh, Postgres. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, but but because then you can just spawn 15 APIs in parallel and they all can handle the requests. Mm -hmm. And as long as the truth is in some database where they can look it up, they don't have to share knowledge. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Single source of truth yeah. is it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We violated that, of course, at one of our <laughs> products at work. Yeah, I, I mean, I need to emphasize here that people get a feeling for how it's in real life, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you always think, oh, wow, they built these beautiful skyscrapers. And then mm -hmm. a guy tells you, yeah, I know all of this, but we basically give a shit for it. <laughs> and the reason why we give a shit for it is we have so low traffic and we know that it will never be on this one service so much traffic that we can just give a yeah. shit you know we just have one pod running 
and then you don't have to care about um, uh, horizontal scalability. Mm -hmm. So always be a bit aware about the context. That's what I'm say always with feeling, mm -hmm. because that means the difference between spawning a pod and letting it run, or spawning a pod, a database, or a cache additionally, and maintaining that. And you can imagine how how screwed up that yeah. is, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So just be aware of that a bit. Um, yeah, most of this stuff, like I said, is already provided like cacheability i mean web requests can be cached yes of course i mean you don't need to do anything about it really um, and other things you know you can exchange formats actually mm -hmm. most apis offer you to get different response formats and they do their conversion automatically if they can mm -hmm. and not that anyone nowadays does xml really i mean xml is good man if you want to make sure that what's inside is really what's inside but it's so verbose, man. You don't want to transfer that. Yeah. JSON is, f is far better in that regard, right? Yeah. I mean, the best is usually a binary yeah, format. It's right. not even any of yeah. those. Um, but the problem is always people... Like, if you have two systems in your hand yourself, mm -hmm. or oh, Jesus Christ, let them communicate in a binary mm -hmm. way. Yeah, with Protobuf, for example. Yeah. But if a client is somewhere, it's usually a text format as a better interface. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, of course you can also make that work with binary formats, but I won't go into that. You see, I like it's a huge, it's a huge thing. Topic, yeah. This entire topic. Yeah. yeah. So uh, read through it a bit, but like I said, just be aware mm -hmm. of a few properties. Like, do you need to scale it? So don't go into state, you know. And if you do, uh, make sure where you put the state, you know, and that that holds. Mm -hmm. uh, also. Um, multi-layered anyway you know sometimes what you have in front of an api that's why I, I wrote can write books here is the api itself is not really serving but in front of it is usually a web server yeah. or a load balancer even mm -hmm. which directs the traffic uh, depending on which which server is currently healthiest and it's, so it's it's you know a lot of this stuff is also around like it's insane really doing that well mm -hmm. And uh, just want to emphasize with the cloud, like if you go into AWS or mm -hmm. Azure or Google yeah. Cloud, they do all of this already automatically. Like it's really automatic what they do yeah. in, in most parts. But Jesus Christ, then you pay a bill, I can assure you for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's, yeah. Like the thing is, if you know how to get your hands dirty and you know how to do it yourself, mm -hmm. you can do get it done really cheap. Yeah. And uh, it's more fun, I must really say to me often. Not always, but often. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I won't go into REST too much because of this. Uh, you can read through it, yeah. so you just heard it. But to be honest, no one at work ever discusses this. Because usually you already discuss about code yeah. where someone screws up. And if someone st saves, for example, something somewhere, you already know, okay, is this going to be like stay like this forever? Or do we maybe right away go for a mm -hmm. cache or a database, yeah. you know? So it's just that you are a bit aware of these things, also what formats to have and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have to have a lot of traffic on your APIs anyway, in the beginning, it doesn't matter all of this, you know. So it's really depending on where you work, man, mm -hmm. Manu. It's really the, the golden question. Um, yeah. So I need I need some tea, man. <laughs> a lot of a lot of sad emotions I mean, come up. There, in me. There's so many um, topics we could go and make a separate video about it. But if yeah, Jesus, man, this is ridiculously just, big. Just those formats, and you have to know a, li a little bit about how to work with them, how to read, how to write them, and stuff. And yeah, so we could make a lot of videos about just that topic. So API is more or less uh, depending on your knowledge about the domains beforehand that was why i was thinking about one hardcore example mm -hmm. maybe one hardcore task i was really thinking about it maybe where you have to put it all together mm -hmm. really together like no no cushions mm -hmm. <laughs> um but maybe we <laughs> maybe do that the... as a big finale yeah. uh after the course or something so we give the people a bit some some time ahead and i can also plan yeah. it a bit because then you will really have to endure the sh <laughs> fun to the limit but then you have at least seen and used it all for real yeah. You know? and, and I cannot push that high enough that um, the value of having that in a repo which you did for yourself and you can talk about yeah. that. I mean, for every interview and they either look at your code 
or want to want you to talk about your code this is the perfect opportunity to shine because you can tell them and, and show them what you did and if you have done it all regarding the api yeah it's a huge benefit right yeah and especially also you can host a free fun api yeah you, know, you can tear it down anytime sure. you know no one pays for it so you can do whatever you yeah. want as long as people don't rely on it just right on there uh, i might shut it down if i get tired of it yeah. you know um but at least you know you get also some DevOps experience. And the thing is, I had a talk with someone mm -hmm. I think a week ago. Okay. Also another uh, ma manager actually, yeah. and he also said he would not hire someone who can just code anymore. Like you need to yeah. have these skills around. This is right. this is really what's getting you the the, the job is, is like someone who can write Python. That's so boring. Like, yeah, like, everybody can that. We don't today. Yeah. Yeah, it's nothing special. Mm. It's nothing really, really problematic. But to have a person and tell them, I need a website in three days. Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> I don't care how you get it done. Yeah. You know, here's some money, rent servers or whatever you need, but just get get stuff on. And you're like, okay, let's the fun mm -hmm. begin. You know, and if you know what you yeah. do, um, that's really yeah. And also getting stuff done very lean then and so, so forth. Um, and then you also know more about the architecture because I think that's much more where the money today lies. Uh, because I was, uh, as mm -hmm. I was telling you, right, I, I started using GitHub Copilot and my yeah. God, I mean, um, talking about <laughs> it's coding, ridiculous, man. we will be coding differently in a couple of years from now. And so coding is not a challenge anymore. Already, man. Already, yeah. Already. Yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not the challenge it's anymore. Just... But but to know about architecture and how to build that stuff, I think that's much more where it's still not quite there yet with co copilot. You, you can think of it in AI a bit like being a craftsman, you cannot really automate that with robots sure. because it's just so individual, usually building houses and stuff like yeah. this. And I really like the the surrounding works of it there too because it's usually so hard to automate it um in all circumstances mm -hmm. even if they have these cloud architectures and that stuff but there's always something custom mm -hmm. i don't know why but it's so funny because in the media it doesn't show but when you really work with clients and companies there's always yeah. custom and that can be quite fun you know and that's not automatable by <laughs> ai i can assure you that Okay, so let's get into the dirt a bit All more, right. into networks, protocols, and other shenanigans. Mm -hmm. So the APIs usually run on HTTP, which is the communication one or the major communication yeah. protocol. And I just say one because there are multi, there are so many layers of communication protocols when you do networking. Yeah. So I would lie if this is the protocol, but this is most of the time the underlying mm -hmm. one. Um, for example, HTTP is based on TCP or uh, TCP IP or UDP but in the meantime now it's based on quick actually which is based on UDP so you see it's like protocol and protocol and okay. protocol and protocol yeah. um, but just that you know HTTP you should really know like what's underneath TCP or, or quick or whatever don't yeah. care you know you can ignore that for yeah. the moment um, that's not the level you should you should be aware of but HTTP is um, and like I said, there are other protocols like FTP for yeah. file transfer or IMAP for, for emails, but we don't do any of mm -hmm. this. We really just do HTTP. And most importantly, you know HTTPS, which is like this little S here. <laughs> that saves oh. you all the day. That is basically, you cannot imagine how many downtimes that little S here cost <laughs> in, in our uh, uh, job infrastructure. Yeah. Because people forgot to, to uh, renew certificates mm -hmm. in time and stuff like yeah. this. And uh, it's a classical big company thing. And then sometimes suddenly the services stop communicating because they cannot trust each other anymore. Right. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Like this little S is really, is really the devil in hell also getting it running well. Mm -hmm. And nowadays it goes if you have an own Linux server. But Jesus Christ, man. Like this little S is always, it always makes every programmer I know a bit nervous when it comes yeah. to it. You know, it's just always like, ah, oh, <laughs> dang it. We need to do HTTPS. Yeah. 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 But the important part is, I wrote that uh, lower down. If you write an API, just care about mm -hmm. HTTP, which means uh, not encrypted traffic. Yep. And usually on top of the unencrypted is anyway a web server, which does the HTTPS. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you basically just do HTTP 
and then on top of it is anyway some other software which uh, in the network runs does the, the mm -hmm, encryption mm -hmm. stuff to HTTPS. Um, yeah. Uh, one more important thing is it comes in three flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, and three. The, the major, three major versions. Um, one and two I wrote are based on TCP still. Three is based on QUIC. Um, the, why is it important? Because, for example, I use the library... Uh, to write our APIs. Mm -hmm. And at some point I wanted to check what HTTP version are they using and they are using HTTP mm -hmm. 1. <clears throat> and this is horribly yeah. efficient. I mean, if you if you have no traffic on it, it doesn't yeah. matter. But I think HTTP 3 is about three times oh. less traffic. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yes. Um, and because the bill is going to be a third. <laughs> if you have yeah. really a lot of traffic on, you pay for every byte on your yeah. network. Like... So these little things, mm -hmm. if you get pressure on your services, everything matters, mm -hmm. man. Everything. Um, then it really matters that you know and ask yourself, why is my software using HTTP mm -hmm. 1, yeah. for example? Yeah. yeah. Good thing is this is so simple, you could implement it in a few lines. Like it's so mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. But just know there are three versions and know everyone is better. And maybe the third one is a bit the special one mm -hmm. because it does under under the hood something entirely different than the previous yep. ones. That's basically all the knowledge you need. Yeah. Um, have you ever worked with HTTP? Generally, like writing an yeah, API with these I methods? Yeah, I did um, in part of a video which um, told me the five things a Python programmer should program. <laughs> First thing was a web scrapper and the second one was a REST API. And I think I had, um, had done some of it. So I got a working API, but it was really just... I mean, just the API running and a post and a get command, I guess. I guess, yeah. Okay, so okay, really, yeah, I did not make too much with the with the under with the code underlying. So yeah, use some tools to do it. Yeah. I mean, you sh you don't need to know much about the protocols, but the HTTP methods one should mm -hmm. really know if you write and apply for a yep. job. Because like. Um, yeah, they, they, they really matter. Yes. They, they were one of the few things which really matter. Like if you get the website, of course, it's a get, but you should also know the head method, mm -hmm. for example. So sometimes you want to just know how much memory will the, the, the resource I get or the file I download be, and then you can just do a head request just instead of a get yeah. request. Um, I mean, delete is clear, but then comes always the good riddle. What What is different between put and post? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's always, I, th I I don't know, like no matter who I discuss with. And even after a few months after the people or we figured it out ourselves, there comes a question again. What's the difference between put and post, yeah. you know? Um, because this is kind of like uploads an entirely new resource and this one just submits something, you know? So there's always a bit of vague which one it is, but most of the time people go for post anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, patch is rarely used to be honest because it you could partially replace stuff like you could say mm -hmm. I have I don't know a video game character which has a sword and I want to give it a different sword or something through an API request yes. but um, you wouldn't the reason why you don't do a patch um, is because it sucks to implement okay because you always get partial information and then you need to see how it is and then you need to match the partial information on your internal data yeah. structure. So most of the time, it's really just easier to make a post and say, like, if you tell me anything, tell me tell me everything, you mm -hmm. know, so I don't have to care about this partial yeah, stuff. Yeah, you, yeah. Know? Um, you can also, if you have a lot of information and you would do a patch, you can break it down into pieces. Mm -hmm. You can, for example, say, uh, instead of the route, you go for modify the entire character with all its attributes and there you would apply a mm -hmm. patch you could also just give a, a further path like slash weapons mm -hmm. and then you could do a post request because it replaces the weapons entirely yeah. or something you know so you see basically uh patches rarely needed <clears throat> if you if you you can really do most with post uh -huh. but yeah okay no. post i get but put what well, put is new barrier with all things or what, what is yeah, but exactly what it does. It uploads an entirely new resource entity and possibly replaces an existing okay. entity. So 
doesn't Ethic. care if it replaces it or it doesn't it, but just puts it on there. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It just puts it on there literally. <laughs> <laughs> Why run <and> forget? <laughs> And post um, also usually ha might have some side effects, like some stuff mm -hmm. behind might go yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Put is really just put it up. Yeah. But like I said, it's a bit vague, so people fight over that stuff mm -hmm. anyway mm -hmm. all the time. And for sure, I I don't get it right uh, all the time. I most of the time I also do get, post, sometimes mm -hmm. delete, of course, and maybe in rare occasions mm -hmm. ahead. Put is really out of the the game and patches usually are also out of the game okay yeah um another thing you should really know about http and this is one of those these bodies really are important and these bodies are important which is the error categories mm -hmm. so um if it starts with one like http one something yeah. you know it's a, just an information uh, response code you yeah. get from the the like from the other side uh -huh. you know if it's a 200 in the 200 range it's a success uh -huh. a 300 is just redirection information mm -hmm. 400 is you screwed up and 500 is the other guy screwed yeah. up yeah. you know and you should really don't know the codes screw them you know you can look them up anyway mm -hmm. on google but um you should really know the ranges roughly one is never used forget about yeah. that 300 yeah occurs of course, redirection is a part of yeah. APIs. Um, most of the time you have a 200, yeah, maybe sometimes a 400 if the request is malformed or a 500 in case your API yeah. crashed. <laughs> so yeah, so you really should know. And then there's of course the finer granularity, for example, most of the time you return a 200 mm -hmm. But that's with a payload. For example, most people don't know it, but if you have no payload, then you should return a two or four. Okay. Um, it's always funny, these codes, you know, <laughs> what they have. Yeah. Like, there are a lot of them, but most of them you don't mm -hmm. need, you know. Like, I wrote down the most important yeah. ones, like 301 stuff moved, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that's, for example, interesting. Uh, the 304 is quite often, if you look in your browser, that... It's kind of like not modified. Like I don't download that again because it is the same as yeah. before. You forgot the 404. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Did I? yeah, actually I did, man. The 404 not yeah. found. So that's the only, Never only forget one that line one. No by heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone out there, like when you w visit a website and there's a yeah. sub route, which you cannot find, you usually get a 404, yes. right? That's the not not found. That's where it's coming from. Of course, no one knows <laughs> it when they see it. It's so yeah, they have funny images uh, yeah. from time to time. I think GitHub has also. I'm still I'm still a fan of the 418. I'm a teapot, yeah. which basically <laughs> says, right. "Dude, like 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 <laughs> it says, uh, you try to brew coffee, but I'm a teapot." It's kind of like you're you're wrong here. Like <laughs> I'm not wrong address. I'm not doing mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it, it's it's never implemented, but I like it. Of course. I always like when they do standards and do yeah. this silly stuff. Yeah, but but why mock yeah. on the teapot? <laughs> they just assume that every programmer just drinks coffee like the Java boys. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good I one. I think it's it's also a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, of course, the classical ones: bad request, unauthorized, and mm -hmm. forbidden. Yeah. Uh, those are really they haunt you like hell, man. Especially with. SSH and authorization and authentication and that stuff yeah. all the time. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. 500 is really, it's mm -hmm. a classical one. 500 is internal server error. That's, it's always nice when you make a query to an yeah. API and you get back 500 and that's it. You do, you have no clue what's been yeah. going on underneath, yeah. you know, how you, how you screwed yeah. up, but you can be sure you really screwed <laughs> up, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so it, annoying when you don't get error messages. The from same APIs. thing with 500 and then bad request. Is that the thing, or is that another code? But I, I, but no, that's a 400. 400 is, ah, yeah, is yeah, basically right. if it's you kind of, yeah. if you send a payload and you forget a field, yeah. and then it's coming like smack you in the head and says bad yes, request, yes. dude. Like you forgot yeah. a field. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, if it's unfriendly, it doesn't tell you you forgot a field. It just smacks yeah. you. It just yeah. says 400. Figure out yourself. Douche. Yeah, that's why user experience is so important. Because uh, all those yeah, especially keyboards, 
with API yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so don't don't remember the codes. Screw it. You will know them anyway when you suffer. But know the ranges: two hundred success, you know, redirection. Four, you screwed up. Five, the other guy screwed up. <laughs> or you, it. if you build yeah. both systems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Happened. Happened a few times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i wrote down here a bit of https mm -hmm. um um usually https requires certificates which mm -hmm. is a topic on its own where everyone always walks around yeah um i will go into that later a bit because usually uh, you can automate that with something which is called let's encrypt yeah is so if you usually pay you pay for uh, ssl certificates yeah. and uh but let's encrypt uh it's an automatic system put up but as a non-profit and it lets you to automatically serve you TLS certificates for free. Yeah. Uh, which, which is amazing because that allows basically a lot of automated systems at all in the internet to uh, automatically uh, get SSL uh, uh, kind of the TLS certificates. Mm -hmm. So this is really amazing. And there's also some Python bot mm -hmm. they wrote. So in case you have a web server or something running where a website is on, you just let the, for example, your Python app run as HTTP. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it usually sits one of two fellows, either the Apache web mm -hmm. server or the Nginx web mm -hmm. server. And um, those actually, um, if you run that that automatic uh, Let's Encrypt bot for, uh, they work with those Apache or Nginx servers automatically and install the certificates. Yeah. So it's a no brainer. And it renews every three months or so. So it's super. It's super, super like this, yeah. Let's Encrypt changed it entirely because you don't have to bother anymore. Yeah. Um, if you're not working with custom certificates in big companies like I Yeah. <laughs> it's all this uh, special because thing again. In our big company, it's not automated. No? <laughs> no, you do need to make a manual request to a wow. department. Wait a day. And then someone sends you the certificates. I mean, they're longer than at least uh, in duration, but screw it, man. Nothing automated wow. because you need a manual approval process mm. for trustworthiness. Mm. That sounds like a German thing. But it just sounds <laughs> like some people who don't realize how this world runs nowadays. Yeah, and, and how many servers got screwed up by that? I think a few, right? <laughs> i must say though yeah. for for stuff which is not in the corporate network which needs those certificates yeah. we do a let's encrypt also okay and okay. Uh, most of the for example what's cool is uh kubernetes if you yeah. have a kubernetes cluster uh -huh. there is um an ingress controller usually installed to get traffic from outside uh -huh. in. and usually that one already can also do https for you automatically okay, okay. Over, let's encrypt okay even. so most of the time it's actually to that even connected. So all you have to do is put your HTTP app on the uh -huh. cluster. Um, you need to to uh, configure the, the ingress. Mm -hmm. That's one part you need to do. But as a part of that automatic configuration, you get HTTPS for free. Yeah, that's nice. That's really yeah. cool. That's really cool. So this Let's Encrypt, if you'd ever have too much money to donate or something, um, uh, I really, I'm quite quite fond of them it's really good mm -hmm. like changed so much because otherwise i need to pay these companies and they send it also to me manually and that stuff bah, don't want to do any of yeah that. sure yeah and that's really yeah. completely for free I mean, wow it's completely wow. for free yeah okay. it's amazing yeah free game changer for the whole internet yeah so then protocols on protocols <laughs> so i mean http is the base <laughs> protocol but on top of that, of course, comes another protocol. I mean, here you can just send stuff back and mm -hmm. forth. But of course, what you send is also usually in a protocol, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, you can send... Uh, what you usually do in an HTTP request is you have a header. And in the header, you specify what you mm -hmm. send. Um, a header is basically just a Python dictionary where it's a key and a value. So okay, yeah. In any case, people people wonder how that looks like. It's really just header yeah, stuff. Sounds simple. Um, it's just a Python dict where the header, there are certain keys well known in the standards, uh -huh, yeah. you know, like application slash type or response yeah. type. And there you can specify, for example, I want uh, back JSON or I want XML uh -huh. back. Yeah. yeah. And this is really cool because that gives the people, um, the 
possibility to customize mm -hmm. that yeah right um but most of the time no one it's like i provide json no one uses xml like who comes here for xml doesn't get it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's nice that you can specify it but it's also now who is specifying the client when it, it calls for a request yes, yes exactly you can you can have two two things you can even tell the other side i encoded it as json or you can even could say i coded it as xml mm. you could okay, even do okay, that okay. so you can do it both, both ways. ways but you as the person she is sending she can <laughs> already <laughs> german getting through um yeah you you tell which format to send and which one to receive mm -hmm. and sometimes they tell you dude we don't serve that or they say we 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 ain't talking that language here that might happen too so most of the time it's JSON. is this then a bad request that could be a bad request okay. for example okay. yeah uh i'm sure i need to would need to look it up but i think it's a bad request okay. yeah uh just that you know you can send anything you want even your wife's pictures over <laughs> http of course yeah um but yeah, most of the time for APIs, it's JSON to send data. Mm -hmm. um, Base64 uh, is also, it's funny, it's basically binary, but it's encoded as strings. So it's basically a blob, but as a string, mm -hmm. which is so funny mm -hmm. because it's like, I want to send a binary, but not a binary binary, but binary in text form. Maybe we make it a string and then I send it to you. And of course, that's less efficient, but it's okay. Yeah, why would you do uh, that? Emails do that. E emails don't send binary binaries they send base 64 mm. just that you know okay that's why if you want to send you know that the limit is 20 megabytes <laughs> and you do 18 megabytes and sometimes it cannot send it yeah that's because it's base 64 because it does it in base, base 64 and then it's actually larger than 20 ah, megabytes I okay uh-huh understood <laughs> that's the little nitpicks yeah. man when you know these protocols you know the dirt <laughs> yeah that's so stupid why, why would they do that why why not just in binary form because the protocol i think does not allow binary itself ah, okay i think the imap protocol is all the right issue. yeah understood i'm i'm not sure i never did email it's it's horrifying me thinking of it always uh -huh. but uh, i'm pretty sure that it's most likely a protocol implementation which has no binary parts yeah, yeah. Or even if it has, it's some people implement it differently or whatsoever. There are always a billion reasons why people do base 64. And also APIs, what's often is, is they send JSON. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you have a field, I don't know, like image. Yes. And then sometimes in this JSON image, you have a base uh, in the JSON payload, string. they have a field. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah have a base 64 I saw that. Yeah, because, yeah. because and, and this makes also a bit sense. For example, if you upload a config yeah. file in a bigger JSON yes. payload. Yeah. Um, it makes no sense to send that as a string because it's mm -hmm. big and, and complicated. Yeah. And often it's much easier to just do it in base64 and then you have in your JSON payload one base64 mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. So consider that too if you want to embed something in the mm -hmm. JSON. You see it's ridiculous <laughs> writing APIs. Yeah. Um, you can also upload images and that stuff mm -hmm. and videos right yeah. away. Uh, when you do that, uh, it's no no brainer. Um, Get generally you can also upload a blob there's actually a, a a tight blob so you just they know it's just a binary being uploaded for example if you have a file storage you could do something like this mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. fun um these friends here they are they are when it's uh different formats protobuf is basically json but in binary and some some a lot of sugar and help uh, around it i really mm -hmm. love it like you from all the binary protocols you should you don't need to know them except for protobuf okay. It's really uh, a game changer. That's yeah. um, why I was also thinking about this is, for example, one of the things I would really like to teach too, but I think I could write, let you write in this course four, four APIs or five to get all the topics done. You see, it's really I think huge. We have to make a separate uh, course about protobuf and advanced topics, I, I, maybe. I, I, I feel <laughs> the same, man, like a... <coughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm dying already. <laughs> <coughs> ah, sorry. Pardon me. Oh, good. Oops, mister. Yeah, so uh, know that these there are different types you can send and receive, but mm -hmm. that's usually, usually you just do JSON. Yeah. So not so important. Like I said, up this stuff is a bit more important than here, but you know you can send anything you like. 
for example protobuf is also sent over http okay yeah um yeah so you know under under the hood it's usually also HTTP. yeah um yeah so that's a bit theory man mm -hmm. um <laughs> the video is, <laughs> is 15 hours long already and <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the code man you, you realize how how big it oh, really man. is now, yeah, right? yeah yeah it's it's That's hard it's really big yeah. man it's really big yeah